first one is the government's status. The government has not disclosed their true status. Governments went corporate when nation states were bankrupted. The point is that legislation was enacted to pave the way for the withdrawal of real money, which is precious metal, gold and silver, which would make governments vulnerable because an authority with no substantive, no substance, is basically enslaved, subservient to the banks. And the governments think that the banks have got something that they need, because this is, this is the deception, which one of the deceptions. But I'm focused more on the other two, which is how the governments deceive you into thinking that they have authority that in fact they don't have. Nation states, sovereign nation states, were bankrupted. The banksters got the money in, called the money in, and replaced it with something that is basically fictitious. Gold and silver were withdrawn as money or as standard. The central banks agreed to fund nations that were prepared to corporatize. And for those of you who've done the research, you'll know that within the word corporate, corporation, incorporation, corporatized, is the word corpse, meaning dead. So any corporation is a dead legal fiction. It doesn't really exist. So that means in effect that the United States of America went from being a sovereign nation to, and U United Kingdom as well, sovereign nation to something else that only exists in our mind. The Republic of the United States of America became U.S. Inc. or U.S. Incorporated. The United Kingdom became U.K. Public Limited Company or U.K. PLC. So this is going into the pure or the world of pure commerce. Off the land, onto the sea. The sea of commerce. The seas of commerce. Government is now corporate. But what does this actually mean? Okay, you have the Clearfield Doctrine. It was a U.S. Supreme Court judgment in 1942, and it gave an indication of what being corporate, or having gone corporate, actually means to the citizens, or inhabitants, of that country. When private commercial paper is used by corporate government, government loses its sovereignty status and becomes no different than a private corporation, or mere private corporation. So in other words, UK PLC, US Inc, have the same status as McDonald's or KFC at law. So this, you know what, is in effect being pushed through by McDonald's or K KFC. And it is, if you think about it. As such, government then becomes bound by the rules and laws that govern pri private corporations, i.e. laws of the sea, laws of commerce, laws of contract. And Peter hinted in his preamble that we are only bound by contract. But we need to see how this actually works. If they intend to compel an individual to some specific performance, now specific performance is a remedy in equity. It's when you ask the court to order someone to do B when they've agreed by contract or by agreement to do A, B and C and they've only done A and C. But there has to be an agreement. You can't simply compel someone to do B when it's out of thin air. Oh, I fancy compelling someone to do this, whatever it is, but they, don't, they haven't signed anything, they haven't agreed to anything. But that's how a lot of people think the government can operate. Out of thin air, they've got no dealings with you, they can all of a sudden just rock up, knock on your door, you're compelled to do B. B stands for bugger off, doesn't it? I don't know. Right? If they intend to compel an individual to some specific performance based upon its corporate statutes or corporation rules, notice the word law is missing there. Statutes, codes, rules, conventions, regulations, guidelines. There's no law involved. Then the government, like a private corporation, must prove itself to be the holder in due course of a contract or commercial agreement. In other words, if they don't have your signature on a piece of paper, or the equivalent, there are other ways for them to hold you to a contract, which we'll look at. 
So if they don't have evidence that you've contracted or consented in some way, then they have no hold over you, no obligation to enforce by an order for specific performance. The vernacular would say, the legislation says that you have to do A, B, C, D, and if you only do A, C, and D, then we will fine you, penalise you for not doing B. That's what the vernacular says, because not doing B is against the law. But the reality is that if you have a contract, then they can claim against you for breach of contract for not doing B, because you signed to do A, B, C, and D. But if, you, if they don't have a contract, no deal, no claim on your bike. In postal terms, as we'll see, a return to sender. So it would be um, the holder in due course of a contract or com commercial agreement between it and the one upon whom demand for specific performance or performances are made. So just to reiterate, inequity, which is, as we'll see later, the highest form of man-made law, equity and trust law, they can say to you, as a matter of conscience, you said that you would do bullet point, bullet point, point. you didn't, so we're going to make you do it. That's inequity. But in their, in their system, which is just statutory, codes, legislation, lots of writing on some website somewhere, no one ever, ever gets to see any of this stuff. It looks as though they've created something that binds you, but they haven't consulted you. As, uh, well, this was a quote from a former Prime Minister, Theresa May, we are therefore governed and policed by consent or by contract. If you follow the Clearfield Doctrine, we are governed, policed, governed and or policed by consent and or contract. It has to be that way. If we were governed or policed without consent or contract, then we would already be in a tyrannical Orwellian state. We may be heading gently in that direction, but we're not there yet. Corporate government does not make law, it makes policy. That's what we have to get through to ourselves. Whatever we've heard, especially if we've been to law school, and remember, those who know least about law are lawyers, just as those who know least about health and well-being are doctors. And those who know least about education are teachers. There is therefore no such thing as legal obligation. You may feel obligated, back to the mind and the heart, isn't it? There's also no such thing as mandatory. The government that owns the corporations can mandate the corporations. The fictitious, legal, two-dimensional government, corporate government, can make a mandate to another corporation in the fictitious realm on the sea that they will do something. They'll give them tax incentives. They'll fine them if they don't do it. That's a kind of a mandate, but it's a... As far as we're concerned, it's flying somewhere in the ether. It doesn't really exist. It's not a mandate from a man to a man. There's no such thing. Men and women can only contract, shake hands. When was the last time? Did you ever mandate a neighbour to, to, uh, to mow your lawn? <laughs> Tried it. See how, see how well that goes. Enforcement is a figment of our collective imagination. There's the ment, from Latin mente, meaning mind, and mentir, in French, meaning to lie. So this is a deception upon the mind. So many people who come to these talks and do my courses say, yeah, this is great information, David, but they're just gonna come for me if I, if I you know, and you can feel the fear. This is the complex PTSD rearing its ugly head. I get it. I've put all of this into practice. Nobody has felt more fear and anxiety than me. Well, maybe they have, actually, but I'm just saying that for effect. It's just, it's just that we're not immune to this fear. 
But if you are batting for team humanity, just as you, if you were batting in a cricket match, you wouldn't say, I'm not going out there, have you seen how fast he bowls? You wouldn't do that. You just go out there and take it. Because you've got a team who are, and you're accountable to that team. But if you went to school, it's all, it's every man or woman, boy or girl for him or herself, isn't it? What do they call collaboration at school? Teaming up without express permission. Cheating. Government is also a figment of our collective imagination. Anything ending in meant, enforce meant, govern meant, pay meant, has not really happened. It was simply something that we imagined. Government comes from governare, Latin for control. So there you go. There's a bit of evil in government, isn't there? They can't help themselves. That's their role. To control, demonstrate evil, bless them. People who get angry about government are missing the point. They're there to test your level of goodness. Let them be as evil as they want, it'll wake people up. You know, if they get, like, some of the people, you know, some of the Australian politicians, New Zealanders, Canadians, I'm not going to mention any names, demonstrating evil, demonstrating it beautifully. We need to celebrate that demonstration of evil because it will galvanise people into action. It's not something to have you seen. It's not something to say something like, "Have you seen what's happening in Australia?" Goodness gracious me! Well, yeah, that's an initial, understandable initial first response. But my response is, "Wow, that's going to wake thousands up. That is, that's going to have the, the parks full and the and the roadsides full." because it's such a powerful demonstration of control and evil. And meant, as we know, is the mind. So, mind control, government equals mind control. And anything that they produce works on your mind. 